going on YouTube? Saharali here and today I'm bringing you another wig tutorial. Let's jump right in with everything you need. Fabric glue, scissors, tweezers and fiber. The clips and elastics and decorations are optional and you can substitute things when needed. For example, I sometimes use cotton thread instead of elastic since it looks smaller and more proportional on the doll. So let's start by preparing our wig caps. I know I haven't made a wig cap tutorial like I said and I'm I'm sorry, but I've had to change the glue and nothing that I have used since then has given me the results that I'm kind of used to with nice really flush caps against the head and it's just ugh. I'll make one when I find a material that I stand by or not because there are a million tutorials out there. But for now everyone knows how to make them. Glue, layers, fabric, that's your wig cap. First step when gluing any wig I work on is to add hair for the sideburns. One of the easiest ways to have your wigs look fake is not having hair come down in front of the ears, so I glue in this direction to avoid that problem. Now we're going to glue along the front of the wig, and this may seem strange to be gluing forward into the face, but just trust the process. We're going to be flipping the hair backwards over the rest of the wig, so gluing it forwards in this way allows us to flip it backwards and hide the glue under the pretty locks of hair. Okay, front is all done. On to the back. We're actually continuing to glue in the same way as the front. That is gluing down and away from the crown of the wig cap so that the hair falls back down over the doll. Once that's dry, we can evaluate. The back looks good, but when I pull the front hair off the face, you can see there's a bit of a gap in the middle. I'm gonna rectify this now with more hair since it'll be harder to do at a later point when making the wig. Now we can start filling in the main bulk of the wig. You don't necessarily need to use a marker if you can visualize the layers in your head, but I'm gonna do it so you can see what I'm doing. Fill in hair along this line until you meet the front of the wig. Then of course, let that hair dry for a bit. I like to dry this particular wool with an elastic band holding things in place. It really helps to convince the fiber ends to remain curved against the head. Once that's dry, more of the same. Mark your layers, fill it in with as much hair as needed to conceal the glue of the layer before it, apply a rubber band and let it dry a bit. Another layer, this time it seems more like a U-shape against the front wefts, but the process is still the same. Fill in the wig, nice and tidy, and apply a band while it dries. Okay, now we're at the top and we are going to glue wefts as close to the front of the wig as we can to pull back and cover all the glue we just added. I actually apply a weft on either side pointing perpendicular to the face just to fill it out a bit more before applying the wefts that go back. Now since she's all dry, let's start styling. Yep. <laughs> at first I attempted to use a flat iron from the outside, hoping that would get hot enough to convince the hair to stay back, but it quickly realized that wasn't working, so I used a knife and heated it up to dangerously hot and used that instead. It worked much better, but definitely don't do this if you aren't an adult, and don't do it if you're a child in an adult's body. Oh my god, I shouldn't have done it. Anyway, I'm adding a braid here, just cause it'll look cute, and here's where you can start taking your own artistic liberties if you want to style something in a different way. So now onto the back. First thing I'm going to do is take a bundle of hair and because of the fiber I'm using, I'm going to brush it out and straighten it for length. Next, I'm going to use a cotton thread to bind the hair, not too close to the head, but not super far away either. It's out of focus, but my secret weapon here is a doll making needle with a large thread loop attached. You can use any needle. This is just the biggest one I had handy, so the size was good. You need to push the needle through the hair above the tie. Pull the hair below the tie into the loop of thread on top of the needle and then pull that bottom hair through the top hair. It makes this cool little twirl that definitely feels fishy. Are you a bit confused? I wouldn't be surprised. This part was super difficult to film so I'll show you with a graphic instead. So to repeat, you push the needle through the hair above the tie, pull the hair below the tie into the loop of thread attached to the needle and then pull that bottom hair through the top hair and it makes this cool twirl. Keep going with that style until you get to the end and then tie it off as you like. I tied it off and spun some hair around the thread to hide it. For the remainder of the hair in this section, 
I'm going to do a simple three strand brand. Three strand braid. What did I say? And incorporate a small braid just from next to it using that same needle and thread tool. Twist it around the hair once and then weave the small braid through the center of the big braid. I think it looks super cool. Make another braid at the top of the head, though don't use the hair that directly touches the face, and use the same tool to pull it through the V-shaped pattern we made earlier. You can do this a few times, and I left all of mine unbound so they would naturally come loose and give some volume back to the bottom of the hair. I apologize for not filming this fishbone braid, but it was an absolute nightmare. I had to hold the doll between my legs to keep it steady, and no one wants to see that. I used a white elastic for a pop of a different color, and to keep it down, I also fed it through that V-shaped pattern. That's the MVP of this wig. Another braid to feed through that same pattern. There are so many braids. And just one more at the front. I like how it looks. I promise this is the last one. Now that all the braids are done, it's time to start decorating. Since this wig is serving very pirate mermaid energy, I've added gold hoops, chains, an anchor. Wait, no, 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 anchor. A steering wheel most of which I wove through the braids again because I love how it looks and since it's a dedicated character wig I even glued some little shell accents to key areas. Basically do whatever you want, make it look fantastic. And that gives us a super cool mermaid pirate wig. I gotta say I really love how this turned out. It's so voluminous and looks interesting from every angle, but it's not so overwhelming that you, you kind of get tired when you look at it, you know what I mean? Basically it's hair goals. My hair is too straight to do anything like this, so I'm living vicariously through my dolls. That said, I kind of feel bad for the wig. Now that it's done, it doesn't have a doll to wear it. Tyler looks cute, of course, because she's cute and everything, but she doesn't really scream mermaid. Do you think I should make a doll for the wig? <sighs> Uh, that's it for today's video. Like if you liked it, subscribe, comment, do all that YouTube stuff. Definitely tag me if you make a wig inspired by this tutorial. I would really like to see a pink one as if, if anyone is feeling adventurous. I'm off to probably design a doll for this wig. <laughs> Thanks for watching and as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye!